I'm just going to write the inequalities for this one. I'm going to write the inequalities for the next one, right? Just go through that. Because if you have that, um, you notice in the quiz that some of you got one inequality wrong and then the whole thing ends up without having a solution region, right? And so my iPad was uh, going full blast there because I had to enter your inequalities there. Uh, so here, football stand, uh, game south, pop cans, there it goes, pop cans and hot dogs. So those are your two variables. And then um, I'm looking for inequalities now. Here it is. You'd like to sell, sell at least $780 worth of goods. That's definitely right. And inequality needs to be associated with that one. And the stand has capacity to hold, watch this, hold this many cans and this many hot dogs, right? Oops, I should have given it a different color. So let me let me do that again. Right? Let's go green there. Uh, don't combine that when it's specific to each, right? Don't combine them somehow, right? You just that's basically just saving me some some space here, right? But really, it's saying when it comes to selling, we would go 125 for every pop can and a dollar fifty for every hot dog, and you'd like to sell at least, right? That is supposed to be at least 780 dollars or more, right? So that takes care of the the first one here. And this one should be on its own. So the number of cans, uh, it says capacity to hold. So that means that it must be less than or equal to 175. And the other one for the hot dogs must be less than or equal to 450. Okay, so don't try to find a combination there somehow. Just make it split them up. Oh, and I forgot to define my variables, right? Sometimes I write inequalities and then I... I uh, define my variables. Sometimes it makes more sense to just write it out. It's like, okay, it must be um, number of cans, number of hot dogs, right? X, Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Some of you did that on the quiz, even though I didn't ask for it, way to go, right? And this would be discrete. So when it comes to, uh, time to stating your POIs, you would have to round. And you know what? A lot of you caught that on the quiz, so way to go. There we go. That's that. Okay. For all that. So basically, one mark for uh, each inequality, then one mark for this whole thing here. So that's how I would have marked this one. Uh, next, two jobs. This one was on the quiz. Something like this was on the quiz. So this is... Um, a little different. This is, will be continuous, right? So two jobs, okay, job A pays this much an hour, job B pays that much per hour, right? So it's an indication that A and B or X and Y will be hours at job A, hours at job B. All right, let's read and then here we go. Would like to earn at least, right, earn at least $645 a week. Okay, got it. That's a combination between the two jobs. Work at least 20 hours per week. That's another one right there. Job A, uh, B pays more, but only allows uh, allows no more allows no more than 25 hours per week. That's for job B in particular. Okay. And then there's one more. Do I need another highlighter? Can, can only afford to work up to work up to 47 hours per week between the two jobs. This is combining both jobs. This one is specific to job A. Okay. So let's write this out. For income, I will do this. Hours at job A. And this will be hours at job B. And this will be both positive. Oops, there we go. And this is continuous. And you know what? On the quiz, some of you did not did round your POIs, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna let that one go because in the real world, you don't get paid per decimal hour, right? It's always full hour or half hour or quarter of an hour, right? Like if you're late, they'll take off. At least the jobs I worked, as soon as you're late, you get docked quarter of an hour, right? So that was just, uh, so if you're late, you might as well be late 15 minutes, right? Uh, I, I still tried to make it on time, but there we go. Um, 
So let's see here. 1450. You all got this. That's why you're just waiting. You're just waiting and seeing, right? So that, uh, for income, I would like that to be at least 645 bucks. So that one is done. This one, work at least 20. Job A, sorry, that's specific to job A. I failed to mention that because I'm rushing. Stop rushing, right? Remember cutting in? This is where you're cutting in before you're painting the whole wall, right? So job A, at least 20 hours. So for job A, which is X, that would have to be greater than or equal to 20. Job B allows no more than 25 hours. So it has to be less than or equal to 25. And then this one combined, so X and Y, uh, can be up to 47, right? So you've got four inequalities in this case. So be careful. This is one that on the quiz, a lot of you put some coefficients on here other than just one, right? So you got to watch out for that one. So that's how you would have done this system, written the system, right? Very important. Should I color match? See, once I start, once I have enough subscribers, I only need a thousand apparently, I can start selling ads. So I'm going to have highlighter ads pop up before my video starts, okay? You, you dodge the bullet, but uh, maybe in 20 years from now, if you all stay subscribed, I'll be able to do that. There we go. Uh, 808. This is going down, so my slope is going to be negative, right? So let's see. I'm going to use this point here. So this is 7, and this is 10, right? 7 over 10. So negative 7 over 10 for my slope. I'm using regular shading, which means this is true. So true is below, solid. I have everything now. You're pretty good at it. There's some issues with your slopes, uh, which is, it happens. So less than or equal to negative 7 over 10, x plus 8. And if my way of finding the slope throws you off, go back to however you were taught to find a slope. But I just tell my students, if it's going down from left to right, it's negative. It doesn't matter what you do, it's going to be negative. And then find the drop and the run, right? Pick any two points and figure out what the vertical change is and what the horizontal change is. Boom, you've got your slope, right? It wasn't seven? Oh, it's Monday, right? You got to watch out on Mondays, guys. Thank you. You're so nice about it, too. It, was, it wasn't seven. There you go. Thank you. So that's four over five, right? My bad. My bad. Okay. That was not, so let's go over the quiz now. Uh, that's going to be part of my review. And I don't have much to say here. Uh, the front page. It's really, uh, I would I would have taken off a full mark if the slope was like negative instead of positive, or if it's if the inequality is not pointing the right way, I would have taken a full mark off at this point. So be aware of that on the ACs, that was a little easy when it came to that, just to help you out, build your skill there. So that one was uh, done very well overall. Some of you went one over three for this instead of three over one. Or, yeah, three over four here instead of four over three. So watch your rise and run, okay? Remember, you 
get out of bed before you start running, right? You rise, then you run. Next. Um, this one was done very well. You see that highlighted part here? I think everybody caught that one. I think I can't remember taking a single mark off for you having to flip the inequality. Way to go. This is only when it's a non-contextual problem, you're going to have this issue. So watch out for that. Uh, other than that, most of you had your solution, but it must be labeled. You know why? Because we're using reverse shading. That's the deal. Otherwise, you have to use regular shading and then good luck finding it, right? Um, I mean, you might, be, you might be pretty good at it. I, I struggle myself if I use regular sh shading. Um, so, you know, and you caught that it was a vertical line, like all those things. I, I honestly thought I would have more issues, but maybe you're just a bright uh, set of students, right? Um, not maybe, you are. Okay. So here are your uh, corner points. This is the first thing I do, guys. When I mark these, I go to your corner points. If they match, then chances are everything else is right. Okay, so that's the first thing I look at. So a way to go. And then for and then for this, uh, you have to plug it into every single inequality, and that you have to say whether or not it is or it isn't. You can even say yes, it's true for all of them. Therefore, this is a solution or something like that. Uh, also. If you make a mistake in plugging it in and you happen to still get the right answer, I still take marks off, right? Because I need to see that you, because it's a 50-50, right? True, false, like it could be either or, but I need to see that this was done correctly. You plugged in the right values for all inequalities and kind of see the end statement, right? You're saying that this is true, right? Uh, so make sure you do that for all of them. However, as soon as you come into a false situation, let's say this first one had been false. Just you grab the random one, you're done. You don't need to keep going. But as soon as they're all true, as long as they're still all true, you got to keep going until you find a false one. And if you don't, then obviously it is a solution to the system. All right, next page, the cows and the chickens. Lots of farming questions, right? Um, Um, so here we go. Um, I think all of you uh, defined your variables perfectly. I think this is where we had a bit of problems. Some of it was just not uh, just transcribing it wrong. Like you put some of you put a 50 here when you when you brought the first inequality down, you put a 50 here, and that may have been because of that 50. So actually, I feel. I feel I take a little bit of responsibility. I try to not have double numbers, like I, like a five and a 50, I don't like that. So I try to make it like four, right? Four and 50, so you wouldn't mix it up, but you know, you have to read carefully. Sometimes it does happen. Uh, I think a lot of you went less than or equal to here for this one. So I, I, type, I type your inequalities into my iPad and Desmos tells me where the solution region is supposed to be, okay? And so if that had been the case, if this is less than, then for you, the solution would have been here, right? This little section here, because you would shade to the right of the vertical, right? So I, you need to be consistent. If your mistake above shows that you have no solution, then I would like to see that. Some students say, oh, I know I made a mistake, so I'm just gonna not shade this polygon right here because it looks all right. Uh, I actually don't like that because now you're guessing, right? Tell, like, I'd much rather you have it fully shaded because uh, that's what it's supposed to be and then just say no solution. You would still lose marks down the road because you have no POIs, so you have none of that, right? Less work, if you see that, that means that you lose marks because you didn't have to do as much work, okay? So I'm giving you lots of feedback here. I'm talking about it. I didn't write it as much on your AC, uh, quizzes, right? Uh, rounding the POI is done very well. Most of the time that is needed. Most of the time we, you will have to round. So way to go there. Only one that needed to be rounded. Remember your intercepts are corner points if they happen to touch the solution region. Okay. And the ones that need a calculator are worth more than the ones you can read. So be mindful of that. 
Okay, uh, let's go to the one I stapled onto this because I wanted you to have one with an objective function as well. And this is where it got a little, um, this is where we diverged, let's just put it that way, as a class. So the, the biggest mistake was this one here, this one. So a lot of you put, uh, what were the coefficients again? Five and 24 in front of this, five X and 24 Y or something like that. So that caused uh, everything to be off. And so you would have technically had to shade the whole thing because you ended up with a small little diagonal down here. And technically, if you shaded that, you would have had to shade above it, above that small line, which would have canceled out everything. So that's a minus one here. And as long as you told me there is no solution here, you would have gotten full marks for the graph. But then you lose marks because you have no POIs. Because obviously, if I ask you for them, then there are, there should be points of intersection. And um, so other than that, I can scan and post this as well. I will do that. So if you're scrambling writing this down, uh, I can just post it and then uh, you can take it from there. But overall, the work was done very well. You knew what you had to do, intercepts, do, do, do. Uh, be, be careful with your work, your space. Again, I will tell you this on the, on the test. If you feel like you're running out of space here, bring it up here. It's fine. Anywhere on this page is fine. Um, and then you plug in your POIs into your, oh, some of you didn't do this. So you need to have a, a letter and an equal sign. So this is not an inequality, this is a function. And so you basically need to have this, for, for this particular case, it's about the income. So we go this much per hour, this much per hour, right? So this will give you the the income you can earn, and it will in fact give you, be able to give you the maximum income, which is working eight hours at the first job, twenty four at the second. So that's one thing I want to add. Uh, on the test, I will take half a mark off. You need to tell me what the numbers represent. Like what is the eight and twenty four? What is that? Because some of you just said eight twenty four is the best, right? True. Um, but tell me eight hours at the first one, 24 hours at the second, that's it. That, that I would like to see that extra added piece there to get full marks. I will try to give you a little bit more space, I, but this is the, the test is a booklet. So these, these questions here are probably gonna be next to it, right on the right side but you can see the graph, everything will be visible, but that way you have a bit more space to do the work. Some, um, I'll do the bonus and then I'll talk about what you can expect. Uh, there's one piece that I didn't do a whole lot of that I would expect you to know how to do. Let's see, here's your, uh, let's see again. Uh, he, this is using reverse shading. So technically, this is the solution region here, right? So for this line, true is above, and for this line, true is above as well, right? For both of them, true is above. And so both of them should have been greater than, one of them greater than or equal to, and the other one just greater than because it was dashed, right? It's this one. So that is a given. And then some of our slopes were off. So for slope, use the points I put on there. If I put up a dot on there, use it, right? Or did I make that one? Let me see. Yeah, I made that one. Oops. Okay. Never mind. Looks like look like it was given. And then if you're not sure, try to repeat that. Try to repeat the slope you got one more time. If you, in fact, land at the perfect intersection, then that is the slope, right? Um, so keep that in mind. What else? Oh, yeah. So this was a bonus. Plus two if you got it all right, like every single one that was a plus two. So sometimes you got half, sometimes one. It depends on what went on, right? 
So uh, this ended up not being, and watch this, this first inequality here had the x and the y flipped. So you have to watch out, right? Plug it in in the right spot. Uh, so that's what your answer is. Here is something <clears throat> I want you to be able to tell me. Let's, let's talk about it. I won't have time to do an example, but let's, for example, go to, go to this, uh, I guess it would be page three on here, the optimization AC3, this one, this question here. Let's say I didn't give you all of this. I just asked you, hey, knowing that X represents hours worked at A, Y represents hours worked at B. So I'm going to block off the top, right? If I give you this inequality here, X is greater than or equal to 5, could you tell me, could you write out what that is saying? You should be able to. You should be able to be like, okay. You should be able to say, okay, X is number of hours at job A, then this would have to say that uh, hours at that job, at job A, has to be more than or equal to 5, or something like that, or at least 5, or something of that nature, using your own words. Here, you would have to say, oh, the hours at job B can be up to 24, have, can, have to be less than or equal to 24, or something like that. There's going to be a small section on writing backwards, like, I will give you a system and you just tell me, what is this saying? What is this saying? Like, what, is, what are these statements saying, right? And so I will expect you. So this one, you'd be like, oh, the hours at both jobs can be up to 32 hours, right? So going back to basically you stating the inequality in written form, okay? I would expect you to know how to do that. So be, uh, be as specific as possible with those those questions, okay? Okay, I'm gonna pause it here. Um, I, I did post that on Google Classroom. I just sent you a, a, a message, right? So towards the end of this booklet, so specifically starting on page 75, there is a practice test there starting on page 75. So if you go through that, I left you lots of room to work those questions out. And then on page 79, right, practice test key, I just give you some of the graphs and I did use Desmos, so sorry about, like it's not quite handwritten, but the answers are there. If you want even more, then after there, there's a optimization review worksheet. So this is dealing with objective functions a lot. That key, if you go all the way to the back, starting on page 90, I actually scanned the key, right? And, and I included that as part of your workbook. So if you want uh, to do those for tomorrow, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Can't tell me that. Don't have the key for this one, so if I get this one wrong, I have it somewhere, just not right here. Uh, assign variables to this problem. There is a lake and subdivided it into a private lake, Ontario. Basic or deluxe, so there we go. Number of basic, Y would be number of deluxe. And definitely this, and definitely discrete. Okay, I write the inequalities for this in this case. So I'm going to try to scan for it. Fifty cottage lots. That is probably something there. Develop wishes to maximize profit they have they have this much to build cottages that's another one so what's up with the 20,000 and the 25,000 
what's up with that, right? There is nothing about profit, right? There's no restriction on wanting to make at least this much, not that I see. So why is that there? Well, that's probably for your objective function. Like if it's no use there, it's probably later on. So I will talk about this. The number of cabins combined must be less than or equal to 50, right? That's this one. If you only have 50 lots, then you only can can have only 50 cabins all right the next one is the the, the money they have to build it and so it take it costs fifteen thousand dollars to make the basic ones and thirty five thousand to make the deluxe and that has to be less than or equal to a million and fifty thousand there we go that's this one here I could have said they want to make at least 50, not 50, at least 40 deluxe cabins, or they can, they want to have at least three times as many deluxe as basic, or, right, options are endless, but this is all that is happening here. Um, next, we're not going to graph. This one would have been a fairly simple one to graph, but here, the object, objective function. So for profit, you would use the numbers above. This one, this is the objective function for profit. What about the objective function for cost? Like if it says, hey, they wanna minimize the cost involved. Like, oh, okay, I need an objective function. I need a function that will make me be able to figure that out. So this would be cost would be, then I'm using the 15,000 X plus 35,000 Y, but it's not an inequality in this case, it's a function. I, there could be an objective function for number of uh, cabins or cottages sold. That would just be X plus Y. So that's all I wanted you to practice. So this is where you plug in your points of intersection into and you find the one that gives you the most or the, the least. It depends on the question, right? And now let's do the... Uh, this is it, and then we're done today. You can relax or work on whatever you need to work on. So here we go. Math contest has two sections, part A and part B. So I will say that X, sorry, X would be questions in part A, Y would be questions in part B. Okay. Uh, and so what do we have here in terms of inequalities? I get uh, four minutes to solve one question and A, six to mark. It's worth six marks, sorry. Right? Time and marks. Time and marks. So what's happening here, guys? Be careful with that, right? It takes four minutes worth six marks. That's just information, right? Each part in uh, each question, part B, is six minutes to solve is worth 10 marks. And here it is. You must answer at least 12 questions, right? That would be an inequality. So you're going to need to somehow come up with that restriction. And you have an hour limit, six minute, six minute limit. So there it is. That's what you should probably look for more so than anything else. So for the first one, uh, both questions, the amount of questions must be at least 12, right? That would be inequality one. That would be this one. And the uh, time limit, I would use the four minutes for first part six minutes for the second part and that has to be less than or equal to 60 minutes right so that's this one right here what about the marks mr erickson what's up with that well the objective function for score that's where that comes in right so uh, score would be 
6 marks for every question A, 10 marks for every question B. That's your objective function. And you're like, uh, could there have been an inequality for that one? It's like, yeah, uh, it could have said you want to score at least, you know, 30 to pass or something, or that's your personal goal of at least 30, then you may have used these as well to come up with your inequality. So you just read carefully and and if you if you graph this and it's like eh, everything is shaded, right? Um, maybe go back and check the one that's that's causing everything to be shaded. Maybe look at that one. Right? Um, so that's it. That's all.